The Sangama Sun, Part 1, The Calling. In the vibrant township of Phosphorus, nestled within the beating heart of Johannesburg, resided a seemingly ordinary boy named Tabo. Life seemed to orbit around the usual routine for him, school, soccer with friends, and dutifully assisting his mother with the household chores. Tabo's mother, a computer scientist with a brilliant mind and a flair for fashion donned a stunning afro, adorned with colorful hairpins that reflected her vibrant personality. When she wasn't busy coding or saving the world from cyber attacks, she dazzled in her stylish attire. She was the epitome of brains and beauty, always ready to fix technical glitches and rock the latest fashion trends simultaneously. Having descended from a long line of powerful preachers, prophets, and apostles, she was the binding link between Tabo, his father and God. Tabo's father, a charismatic lawyer with a sharp wit, could argue his way out of any situation. His courtroom prowess was matched only by his love for snazzy suits and a penchant for dad jokes that would make even the grumpiest judge crack a smile. With his slicked back hair and a briefcase full of legal wizardry, he commanded respect wherever he went. Having descended from a long bloodline of powerful Sangomas, he forsook that fate and that side of his family when he met Tabo's mother. Tabo's parents were devout Christians, highly regarded members of their church. Their dedication to their faith was the defining attribute of their colorful personalities. They were pillars of the community, respected by all for their unwavering commitment to their beliefs. Now, Tabo may have appeared to be your average lad, but there was more to him than met the eye. Behind his nerdy glasses and slightly disheveled hair, Tabo harbored a passion for music that ignited his soul. Amapiano and hip-hop melodies coursed through his veins, and he found solace and creativity in crafting beats and occasionally dropping some wicked rhymes. His room, a clandestine sanctuary of rhythm and flow, was a breeding ground for musical genius, however, despite his musical prowess, Tabo remained an enigma among his peers. His peculiarities, both in taste and personality, set him apart from the crowd, rendering him the target of incessant bullying at school. It was during these trying times that he sought refuge in the virtual realm, escaping into the vortex of TikTok, YouTube and other social media platforms, where he could be free from judgment and revel in the world of the weird and wonderful. But everything changed on his 13th birthday. That night, he had a strange dream. He saw himself standing in a dark forest, surrounded by shadows. He heard voices whispering in a language he didn't understand. They called him by name and told him to follow them. They said they were his ancestors, his true family. They said they had a gift for him, a power that only he could wield. They said he was a Sangoma, a healer and a diviner. Tabo woke up in a cold sweat. He felt a strange sensation in his chest, like something was stirring inside him. He tried to shake it off and forget the dream, but it kept coming back every night. He started to see things that others couldn't, flashes of light, shapes in the clouds, symbols on the walls. He heard voices in his head, telling him things he didn't want to know, secrets, lies, dangers. He felt a pull towards the forest, where he knew the ancestors were waiting for him. He didn't tell anyone about his dreams or his visions. He was afraid of what they would think of him. He knew that his parents would never accept him as a Sangoma. They believed that Sangomas were evil, that they practiced black magic and worshipped demons. They had told him stories of how their ancestors had abandoned the Christian faith and followed the ways of the Sangomas, only to be cursed and tormented by evil spirits. They had told him how they had broken the cycle of sin and suffering by embracing Jesus Christ and renouncing their ancestral heritage. Tabo didn't want to disappoint his parents or betray his faith. He loved God and wanted to serve him. He prayed every day for God to take away his dreams and visions, to make him normal again. But God didn't answer his prayers. One day, as he was walking home from school, he saw a man standing on the side of the road. The man was wearing a colorful cloak made of animal skins and beads. He had white paint on his face and feathers in his hair. He was holding a staff with bones and shells hanging from it. He looked like a Sangoma. The man smiled at Tabo and waved at him. Hello, my son, he said. Tabo felt a surge of fear and curiosity. He stopped and stared at the man. Who are you? He asked. I am Mukalu, the man said. I am your grandfather, Tabo gasped. He had never met his grandfather before. His father had told him that he had died before he was born. That's impossible, Tabo said. No, 
It's true, Mukalu said. I am your father's father. I am also a Sangoma. Tabo felt a chill run down his spine. How do you know me? He asked. I know you because you are my blood, Mukalu said. You are also a Sangoma. Tabo shook his head. No, I'm not, he said. Yes, you are, Mukalu said. You have the gift of sight and healing. You have been called by the ancestors. Tabo felt angry. No, I haven't, he said. Yes, you have, Mukalu said. You have been having dreams and visions, haven't you? Tabo felt exposed. How do you know that? He asked. I know because I have been sending them to you, Mukalu said. Tabo felt betrayed. Why? He asked. Because I want you to join me, Mukalu said. I want you to become my apprentice. Tabo felt confused. What do you mean? He asked. I mean that I want to teach you the ways of the Sangoma, Mukalu said. I want to show you how to use your gift for good. Tabo felt doubtful. For good? He asked. Yes, for good, Mukalu said. Part 2, The Training Tabo followed Mukalu to the forest, where he was greeted by a group of other Sangomas. They welcomed him with songs and dances, and led him to a hut where he was given a new cloak and a new staff. They told him that he was now part of their family, and that they would teach him everything they knew. Tabo was amazed by the things he learned from the Sangomas. They taught him how to read the bones, how to throw them on the ground and interpret their meaning. They taught him how to make medicines from herbs and roots, how to heal wounds and illnesses. They taught him how to communicate with the spirits, how to invoke them and appease them. They taught him how to enter a trance, how to travel to other realms and see things that others couldn't. Tabo enjoyed his training. He felt a sense of belonging and purpose. He felt a connection with his ancestors and his gift. He felt powerful and wise. But he also felt guilty and conflicted. He missed his parents and his friends. He wondered what they were doing, what they were thinking, what they were feeling. He wondered if they missed him too, or if they hated him for leaving them. He also missed his faith and his God. He wondered if God still loved him, or if he had forsaken him for choosing the Sangoma path. He wondered if he had sinned against God, or if he had followed his will. He tried to ignore these feelings. He tried to focus on his training. He tried to convince himself that he had made the right choice. But he couldn't. He started to have doubts and questions. He started to notice things that bothered him. He started to realize that not everything was as it seemed. He started to see the dark side of the Sangoma world. He saw that some of the Sangomas were not healers and protectors, but exploiters and manipulators. They used the gift for selfish gain, for money and power. They cheated their clients, they lied to them, they harmed them. He saw that some of the spirits were not benevolent and helpful, but malevolent and harmful. They demanded sacrifices, they caused misfortune, they possessed people. He saw that some of the ancestors were not wise and kind, but cruel and wicked. They had a hidden agenda, they had a dark plan, they had a sinister leader. He saw that Mukalu was not his grandfather, but his enemy. Mukalu was the leader of the evil Sangomas, the master of the evil spirits, the servant of the evil ancestor. Mukalu was the villain of his story. He made the choice that he thought was right. He made the choice that he thought was best. He made the choice that he thought was brave. He made the choice that he would regret. He said yes. He followed Mukalu to the forest. He met the ancestors. He accepted his calling. He became a Sangoma. And that's when his troubles began. Part 3, The Escape Tabo was about to fall asleep when he heard a low voice outside his hut. He recognized it as Mukalu's, the old Sangoma who had taken him in as his apprentice. Curious, he got up and peeked through a crack in the wall. He saw Mukalu talking to another man, dressed in animal skins and bones. He couldn't see his face, but he felt a chill down his spine. He strained to hear what they were saying. It is almost time, my brother. The stars are aligning. The portal will open soon. We must prepare for the ritual. Mukalu said. Yes, yes. I have everything ready. The herbs, the bones, the blood. And the vessel? The other man asked. Ah, the vessel. He is sleeping in there. 
He has no idea what awaits him. He thinks I am his mentor, his protector. He trusts me blindly. He has a strong gift, a rare sight. He can see beyond the veil. He can heal with a touch. He is perfect for our purpose. Mukulu said. What is our purpose, again? The other man asked. Mukulu laughed. To bring him back, of course. To bring back the one who ruled before. The one who gave us power and knowledge. The one who was banished by the white men and their false god. The one who waits in the shadows. The evil ancestor. The demon king. Tabo gasped. He couldn't believe what he was hearing. Mukulu was planning to use him as a host for a demon. To sacrifice him in a dark ritual. To unleash an ancient evil on the world. He felt a surge of fear and anger. As he continued to eavesdrop on Mukulu's conversation with the mysterious man in animal skins, a chilling realization struck Tabo. The treachery extended beyond his own fate. Mukulu's vile clutches had ensnared his unsuspecting parents. With every word, the gravity of the situation deepened. We have underestimated the power within the boy. His parents possess knowledge that could foil our plans, Mukulu confessed, his voice laced with a sinister edge. They must be silenced, for they stand as obstacles to our malefic intentions. The other man's gravelly voice responded, carrying the weight of cruelty. Fear not, Mukulu, I have prepared a secret lair where they shall remain bound and helpless. Their brilliance will fade into insignificance against the darkness that surrounds them. Tabo's blood ran cold as he visualized his parents, ensnared in the clutches of a deranged sorcerer. Anguish and fury surged through his veins, fueling a newfound determination. He vowed to free them from the diabolical grasp of Mukulu, even if it meant facing the very depths of hell. With a clenched fist and fire in his eyes, Tabo quietly slipped away from his hiding spot, his mind racing with strategies and escape routes. Time was of the essence, and he needed to get out of there. He grabbed his cloak and his staff, and ran to the door. He opened it quietly and slipped out into the night. He hoped that Mukulu and his accomplice wouldn't notice him. He ran through the forest, looking for a way out. But he didn't find one. He found himself lost and confused he couldn't see anything in the dark. He couldn't hear anything but the howling of the wind. He couldn't feel anything but the cold and the fear. He also found himself hunted and attacked. He encountered wild animals, snakes and spiders, that tried to bite him and poison him. He encountered evil spirits, ghosts and goblins, that tried to scare him and harm him. He used his sight and his healing to find his way and survive. He used his spirit and his faith to resist and endure. He prayed to God for help and guidance. And God answered him. He sent him an angel. A girl. Her name was Nandi. She was a Christian. Nandi found Tabo in the forest, wounded and exhausted. She took care of him, healing his wounds and giving him food and water. She listened to his story and offered her help. Tabo was grateful for Nandi's help and they both continued their journey together. As they walked, Tabo revealed his plan to defeat Mukulu and stop him from unleashing the evil ancestor. He knew that he had to use the power of God and the scriptures to resist Mukulu's attacks and overcome his tricks. Nandi agreed to help him and they both started to pray and recite verses from the Bible. Together, they traveled through the forest, using their gifts and their faith to overcome the obstacles and the dangers. They found Mukulu's hideout, a secret cave deep in the mountains. They sneaked inside, avoiding the traps and the guards. They saw the demon, a dark and monstrous figure, chained to the floor. They saw Mukulu, a mad and desperate man, chanting the ritual that would unleash the demon. They saw the other Sangomas, a group of loyal and fanatic followers, ready to offer Tabo as a sacrifice. Let's go, they ran out of their hiding place and charged towards the circle. Mukulu's followers saw them and shouted, intruders. Kill them, they threw their spears and shot their arrows at Tabo and Nandi. But Tabo raised his staff and said, By the power of God, I command you to stop. Suddenly, a strong wind blew from behind Tabo and Nandi, knocking down the spears and arrows. The wind also lifted up dust and sand, creating a cloud that blinded Mukulu's followers. Stop them, they can't leave, he raised his staff and chanted a spell. The ground shook and cracked, and a dark shadow rose from the earth. It was the evil ancestor, the demon that Mukulu wanted to unleash. Tabo and Nandi stood in awe and terror. They had never seen anything like it. The demon had red eyes, 
black wings, and sharp teeth. It looked at them with hunger and malice. Tabo raised his staff and said, In the name of Jesus, I command you to leave. But the demon laughed and said, You think your God can save you? I am more powerful than any God. I have been waiting for this moment for centuries. I will destroy you all. It lunged towards them, but Tabo and Nandi stood firm. They joined hands and closed their eyes. They prayed together, asking for strength and courage. Suddenly, a bright light shone from their hands. It was the light of God. It enveloped them and grew stronger, pushing back the demon. Mukalu shouted, You fools! You think you can escape me? You think you can defy the will of the ancestors? I will destroy you all. Tabo stepped forward and said, You will not destroy us, Mukulu. We are protected by the power of God. His word is our shield and our sword. Mukulu sneered and said, Your God is weak. He cannot save you from the might of the ancestors. I am the true ruler of this land. I have the power to command the spirits and the elements. You have nothing. Tabo replied, You are wrong. Our God is the creator of all things. He has the power to command the spirits and the elements. He has the power to defeat you. Mukalu laughed and said, Prove it then. Show me your power. Show me your scriptures. Show me your miracles. Tabo raised his staff and said, The scriptures say, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. But I will show you a miracle nonetheless. He closed his eyes and prayed silently. Then he opened his eyes and pointed his staff at Mukalu. Suddenly, Mukalu's body began to tremble and convulse. He fell to the ground, writhing in pain. Tabo recited another scripture. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Tabo continued, You are the tempter, Mukulu. You are trying to lure us away from God's word. But we will not be deceived. We will follow his word, no matter what. Mukulu groaned and said, Stop this. I will destroy you all. Tabo recited another scripture. The Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. Tabo raised his staff and said, Mukulu, you are like the Egyptians. You are pursuing us with your chariots and horsemen. But we have the power of God. We will command the sea to swallow you up. He pointed his staff at the ground, and suddenly a great wind arose. The wind blew sand and dust into Mukulu's eyes, blinding him. Then Tabo recited another scripture. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you, to fight for you against your enemies, to save you. He raised his staff and shouted, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you, Mukulu, to leave this place and never return. Suddenly, a great light shone around Tabo and Nandi. Mukulu screamed and breathed on the ground. Then he vanished, leaving behind only a cloud of smoke. Tabo and Nandi rushed to Tabo's parents, who were now free. They all hugged and cried and thanked God for their deliverance. Then they walked out of the circle, into the light of the rising sun. They were free. They were alive. They were blessed.